King, help us to praise. Father all glorious, soar all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword, our prayer attend. Come and thy people bless and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness on us descend. Come holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear in this glad hour. Thou who almighty art now rule in every heart and ne'er from us depart, spirit of power, to the great one in three. Eternal praises be, hence evermore. Thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for the food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Thank you. Uh, for being with us this morning. Uh, it looks like the sun is beginning to come out and promises to be a very beautiful day. Happy Mother's Day uh, to all of our mothers. We're going to have uh, just a brief tribute uh, to you uh, here in just uh, a little bit. A little better than Mother's Day last year, right? We couldn't take you out for dinner. Uh, we were kind of confined because of the pandemic. So hopefully things are a little better uh, this year. Certainly appreciate uh, DJ Bulls being with us this morning to lead us in our worship. Hey, DJ, show everybody your mask. Uh, modeling in church. Yes. Can you see what that says? No. 728B. Old school. We, we know what 728B means, don't we? I think most of us do. Yeah, I got to get me one of those. Got to get me one of those. Anyway, appreciate uh, DJ uh, and his family being uh, here this morning. Busy morning, busy day. We're entering into a very busy time as schools wind testing, down testing. and uh, as summer approaches, a lot of activities uh, are being planned. Let me quickly plug one thing. This past Wednesday night, we resumed uh, an adult Bible class uh, here at Lamar Avenue, meeting here in the auditorium uh, at 6.30. Uh, and now, this isn't a preacher exaggeration. This is a legitimate count. We had nearly 50. And I appreciate all of those who came out. I uh, want to encourage everyone uh, to think about uh, being with us on Wednesday evenings. We're studying the subject of unity. Uh, I am presenting uh, a few of those lessons, uh, some of our elders and perhaps even some of our deacons before this series is over. We'll be sharing some thoughts on uh, unity. So please uh, mark that on your calendars each Wednesday evening to, to be with us. All of our children's classes uh, continue. Uh, Jared has moved uh, the high school students upstairs uh, back to the youth room and a lot of exciting things occur on Wednesday night uh, for our children as well. Again, good to see you here uh, this morning, and let's continue to worship God together.
Good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day again. Um, Greg and I have the absolute privilege of uh, working with the KFC kids um, right now. And um, being a former uh, public school teacher, I, uh, as, Mother Day, as Mother's Day approached, I was trying to think of a way to um, honor mothers uh, in a tangible way because that's just what school teachers do. And um, I was uh, going through my email a few weeks ago and I came across an email from Live Beyond and um, they were promoting their second annual Mother's Day campaign where for a hundred dollars you could sponsor a mother in their um, in their um, in their program, and um, I thought, well, win-win. Okay, so um, what better way to honor you moms than to for you to see? Uh, your kids demonstrate the love of Christ um, in their lives. So we have some kids up here from the KFC program, and they're going to communicate to you um, this morning what all of the kids in the KFC program have been um, have been participating in in the last few uh, weeks. Um, so we're going to start with Brendan. And uh, Brendan, can you just tell everybody your, your name and who your parents are? OK. Um, my name is Brendan Lee. And my, my parents um, are over there with my sister. <laughs> and who are they? Who are your parents? Uh, Glenn and May Tilly. Okay. And what, uh, what grade are you in, Brendan? I'm in fourth. I'm almost about to be in fifth. To raise up enough money to give to a mother in Haiti. Okay. To have a healthy baby in a hospital with nurses and doctors. Okay. So the specific challenge was to raise up enough money to, to sponsor a, a, a mother. And so each week, Brendan, where did the money come from that you guys brought? It came from... Uh, us doing chores um, or like sa or saving up stuff like if um, you you wanted to like buy like something at the store that you really wanted you could just not do that and bring it here. Uh, that could um, have them help have a healthy baby to to grow strong because there are no um, hospitals in Haiti, and they ha and the babies have to be born on the dirt, and that's not healthy for the babies. Okay. And so at Live Beyond, what do they do for the babies? Uh, we we put th we put them somewhere safe like where the mother can live with, with her baby ha and that the baby will uh, grow strong and uh, not die. Okay. Okay. And so, Brendan, why did we decide to do that? Because we, uh, some of the grown-ups have been on missionaries to teach them about uh, uh, Christ and uh, and. We want to help them since we taught them about that. Okay. And did we reach our goal? Yep, we did. We did. We did. We actually raised two hundred dollars in just four weeks, bringing the students brought one dollar, sometimes two, sometimes five, sometimes ten dollars. 
their piggy bank, out of their concession money, out of their ice cream money. They did a great job. So you raised $200 in four weeks. So how many moms will that sponsor? Uh, two. Two. Two moms that will sponsor. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you. Next, we have a couple of folks in the fifth and sixth grade class, and we're going to start with Brody here in a minute. Um, we have been studying the life of Christ during uh, our time in KFC in that class, and um, we've been introducing the concept of how Christ began to establish his new kingdom and exactly what that new kingdom would look like right here in 2021. So I'm going to give the mic to Brody. Brody, I want you to introduce yourself. Tell them how old you are, what grade you're in, and if you want to, you can point out your parents. All right, good morning. I am Brody Dias. My mom is over there with my brother. He's okay. Um, and my dad's in the sound booth right now, and I am in fifth grade. My name is <laughs> and uh, today I'm going to be reading a verse from... Um, Luke 4, 14 through 21, it is after Jesus has returned to Galilee. Here's the verse. Then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. He taught regularly in the synagogues, and everyone was pray Wait, everyone praised him. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went, as usual, to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He then rolled up the scroll handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. Then he began to speak to them. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. By the way, that uh, quote is from Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 2. Thank you, Brody. Good job. Next, we're going to have Mallory here, and she's going to introduce herself and point out her parents and tell you what grade she's in. And she's going to explain a little bit of what those verses actually mean to her. Okay. My name is Mallory Spencer. Um, my parents are over there. <laughs> uh, I am in the fifth grade, and I'm going to tell you what this means to us. So before this, all ha before this verse happened, Jesus had been baptized. And whenever he was baptized, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And it says... It anointed him to do good things, like set the captives free, proclaim good news to the poor, give sight to the blind, and set the oppressed free. And we always try to reflect Jesus, and we are reflecting Jesus by helping Haiti, who is definitely oppressed, poor, and definitely needs help. It means a lot to us that we know that we're helping people that need help, and it means a lot. Thank you, very, Mallory. Very good. At this time, we're going to have a special prayer for mothers here and abroad. And uh, ask that you pray with us, please. Father, we thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day that you've given to us. We are very mindful this morning of just what a very, very important role that mothers have played from the very, very beginning. We thank you for the blessing that they are in our lives and the influence that they have had on our children and raising them up and providing the example that we need. We thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you for their selflessness. We thank you for the chance to call them our moms. Father, we ask that you also be with those who are not here in this country. There are mothers all over this world that, that are having a difficult time, and we are thankful that you have given us and the KFC kids and the congregation here the opportunity 
to show the love of Christ by helping out so that those babies can grow up and be healthy and strong. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the spirit. We thank you for the spirit that you let down on him so that he could start the kingdom fresh in the new kingdom of his son. Thank you for loving us, Father, and help us to always to do good and to remember where all good things come from. It's through your son's name that we pray. Amen. One more side note. The kids are so excited about this project that they would like to extend this, um, this um, challenge to the congregation. So after the service is over, um, the kids will be spread out in the congregation, and you will have an opportunity to um, bring your pocket change and find one of these KFC kids. And uh, Brother Brad will explain this further in his, his closing announcements. But um, just find one of these kids. They'll have a cup, a donation cup, and um, you'll have the opportunity to spread a little joy to Live Beyond in Haiti as well. Thank you. And you can ask them about what they're learning. They'll tell you. Thank you. If you would and you can, let's stand for these first two songs, please. Amen. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory, Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace, who has bought us and sought us and guided our ways. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again, revive us again, fill each heart with thy love, may each soul be rekindled with fire from above, hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before his throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea. Let all creation praise his name from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea. Let all creation praise his name. 
Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Your rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. And on that day, my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending, ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. And we say together, be seated. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let earth and heavenly saints proclaim the power and might of his great name. Let us exalt. 
halt on bended knee. Praise God, the Holy Trinity. Praise God, praise God, praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise to the King, His throne transcends, His crown and kingdom never end. Now and throughout eternity, I'll praise the One who died for me. Praise God, praise God, praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, praise God. Praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Why do my Savior come to earth and to the humble go. Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He So he gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go, and reign with him through endless days. Be because he loved me so, he loved me so, he loved me so, he gave his 
precious, precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Good morning. If you want to follow along, I'm going to be reading a few scriptures from Luke, the first chapter. I'm going to start on the 41st verse and uh, read down about a dozen verses or so. This is probably not your usual prepare your mind for the Lord's Supper scripture, but listen, I think you'll see how it applies. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. So I thought this would be appropriate because without a mother, Jesus would have had to come to earth a little bit different than he did. But God chose a teenage, single Jewish girl about as far down on the social ladder as you can get to be the vessel for a baby that would grow up minister to the poor and the sick and the outcast and then go to the cross and die for our sins. And we always talk about the sacrifice that God did sending his son and the sacrifice that Jesus did willingly walking that road. But, you know, I think Mary had a sacrifice too because she... She raised that child. That was her baby. And she was there when his ministry started. And she was there at the cross. She saw it all. So, without Mary, the mother of Jesus, this would have been a completely different story. So you know that Jesus was on the cross, but Mary's heart was up there too. But because of the faith and the willingness to serve of a teenage Jewish girl who on paper really didn't look like she had a whole lot of future. Turned out she was uh, the Lord's vessel. She was the Lord's servant. And because of all that, Jesus went to the cross, he died, and most importantly, though, he was raised again. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remember that by partaking together the bread and the wine. And we want to do so with a thankful heart, thankful for God's plan, and uh, thankful that it was fulfilled. So if you would, bow with me and we'll... Give thanks for both the bread and the cup. Our Father God, you loved us so much that even when sin came into our world, 
even from the beginning, you planned a rescue mission, and that rescue mission was Jesus Christ. We thank you for his, his birth, his life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. And today, we are going to be united together as believers, and we're going to proclaim his death, burial, and resurrection until he comes again. And we're going to do that by taking of the bread and taking of the wine. And we ask that you bless, bless this feast of thanksgiving and bless the memory of what Christ has done for us. And may we always keep that in our hearts and minds every day. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Come now, fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee, may I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, I was lost in utter darkness till you came and rescued me. I was bound by all my sin when your love came and set me free. Now my soul can sing a new song. Now my heart has found a home. Now your grace is always with me, and I'll never be alone. Come now, found, come now, King. Come now, precious Prince of Peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. Come thou fount of our blessing. We'll just sing the third verse the way we know it. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Come thou found, come thou king. Come thou precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. Come now, fount of our blessing. Come now, fount, come now, king. Come now, precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you we sing. 
Come, thou fount of our blessing. I'm so bored. I wish I had something to do. <sighs> Thanks for letting me sleep in, kids. If you make a mess in the kitchen, please let me know so I can clean it up. Raising kids is so easy. I just love driving around all day. Oh, I never have to repeat myself. They always listen so carefully. Oh, look, an empty box of cereal. Love it. Just wipe it on your sleeve. It's pretty cold, but you don't need a coat. Oh, you don't have to push in your chair. Don't make your bed. You're just gonna sleep in it again later. I think I'll skip the coffee today. You know, these throw pillows look way better on the floor. I'm really not that busy. Well, you haven't showered in three days, but I think you smell great. We do have food at home, but let's just go out to eat. Just brush your teeth whenever you feel like it. Here, take my phone charger and go put it in your room. Oh, just leave your dirty dishes on the counter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all pull on our phones. Youth sports are so cheap. Braces are so cheap. School fees are so cheap. Hey, can you come crawl in bed with me around 2 a.m.? Thanks. Okay, I just spent two hours making dinner, but if you don't like it, that's fine. Just let me know and I'll make you something else. Don't even bother looking for that. I'm sure it's lost and gone forever. Can somebody please throw something at my head? I mean, I can keep track of every single one of your things. I get a ton of sleep. I get a ton of gratitude from my children. I get a ton of unsolicited help with the housework. Oh, you don't have to hurry up. We're gonna be right on time. Can someone please throw something at the TV? Thanks for doing the laundry, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you use your outside voice? Ah! Fight, fight, fight! Ah! The floor of this vehicle is so clean, I can't believe it. Oh, good. Another trip to the grocery store today. Let's go. Hey, I'm gonna hop in the shower. Does somebody wanna come use the bathroom while I'm in here? your notes you might need them just gonna rearrange the living room real quick okay Jared is really concerned about everyone seeing him we only have two more weeks that have to be up here with him right <laughs> okay so Jared this morning I was perusing on social media and I came across a brand new list and you know how I love lists. You are a list guy. I am a list guy. So the uh, Social, uh, Social Security uh, Administration just released based on new so Social Security applications. That's hard for me to say you can for do some it, reason. Though. Thank you. Uh, the top baby names for 2020. Anybody else seen this list? I think it's brand new, it just, just came out. And I was so disappointed, Jared, neither Randy nor Jared was a top name for 2020, at least for boys, nor girls uh, for that matter. But, but here, here are the top names uh, for 2020. Uh, first of all, the little boys, Leem, Noah, Oliver, Elijah, William, James, Benjamin, Lucas, Henry, and Alexander. Three or four biblical names that, uh, on that list that I found interesting. And here are the top ten female. Olivia, Emma, Ava, Charlotte, Sophia, Amelia, Isabella, Mia, Evelyn, and Harper. So... There you go, top, top names for uh, 2020. Really has absolutely nothing to do with the lesson this morning, but I thought it was interesting. So. Wondering about that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so once again, D DJ, I, I don't know if you picked up on the fact that D Jared and I are now close together when we sing and we're terrible. And we were arguing about where the bass part was supposed to be this morning. I still am convinced you were singing the wrong line we, we go guys first, then girls, in that, that song. It's, 
So I was right. We, no, I was singing first. We don't pay attention to the notes in youth group. They just throw you off. Okay, that explains And quite a lot. frankly, when DJ yeah. sat down with us, he was messing me up. <laughs> <laughs> but we were both <laughs> thankful. Uh, shout hallelujah. <laughs> we do, it, it's not on key noise to the Lord, but it is joyful. You just and get loud on that one. Yeah, that's the get most loud. important thing. So here we are in our next to the last lesson of this series titled, The Gift of the Blessing. For the past several Sundays, Jared and I have been uh, seeking to encourage us all to be better skilled as parents, grandparents, and really just anyone who has any influence, not only over children, but really anyone to give the blessing to. And a lot of this material is based on a book written by Gary Smalley and John Trent. The book is now 25 or 30 years old, but I believe its primary message remains very relevant. And so next week, this series will culminate and conclude with Senior Sunday. And a lot of things are being planned uh, for next uh, Sunday, of course, not only honoring our seniors, but also recognizing Kindergarten and first grade. Kindergarten and first grade. And their families. And, and their families. families. And, parents. and our theme next week will be a church that gives the blessing. So again, even though we've been particularly speaking to uh, young parents and maybe even, you know, grandparents, we've tried to also emphasize that this concept of the blessing is for each one of us. Every single one of us can learn to give the blessing. And so what is important for families is also important for the church family. Jared and I have been really excited about the feedback we've received uh, over the past several weeks on this series. And again, we're really looking forward uh, to concluding this series next week with uh, the church that gives the blessing and all the fun things that will occur uh, next Sunday. So I have been charged to begin uh, this morning, and then I'll uh, give it to uh, Jared. Uh, let me, as I've done each week, remind us of at least Smalley and Trent's definition of the blessing. Words and actions that provide an indelible picture of affirmation acceptance, and unconditional love in a person's mind and memory. So with that definition in mind, they then suggest five elements of the blessing, and we have emphasized uh, the first four. Meaningful touch, a spoken message, attaching high value, Picturing a special future. And this morning, the fifth and final element of the blessing, an active commitment. So let me take just a couple of minutes to kind of define what Smalley and Trent mean by an active commitment. Well, the word active means capable of moving or being moved. So there's some action, there's some energy involved. Uh, movement must be exerted. Busily engaged in some form of activity, absorbed in, productive, occupied, working. And then, of course, the word commitment means a declaration, a promise, a responsibility to perform a task, an obligation, a bond or a pledge. So you bring these two words together, an active commitment. It is assuming responsibility to be connected in the lives of those who are, you are seeking to bless. And I would add to that four suggestions that maybe would be involved in being actively committed to our children, our grandchildren, or again, broadly speaking, to one another. 
it begins, first of all, with your relationship with God. If we are to bless people as we have been blessed ourselves, we must have a relationship with God. And Smalley and Trent emphasize that so often in their uh, book. You might remember that this whole concept is based on the story of uh, Isaac blessing his two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob, of course, stealing his brothers, not only birthright but blessing, and Esau not longing to receive the blessing he uh, desired. And so we, we all can think about the relationship that Isaac, his father Abraham, had with God. And then later, uh, Jacob, his name is changed, if you remember, to Israel which means to wrestle with God. Again, emphasizing a relationship. A second aspect of being actively committed uh, in giving uh, the blessing, it means to be involved with your children. And, and maybe our proof text for that is Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 4, where the, the Apostle Paul, in a pretty long section dealing with household or family relationships, tells parents uh, to teach, to train, to guide their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so being involved, there are uh, two or three verbs in that verse that, that Paul uses, uh, emphasizing uh, involvement and once again, activity and energy. And so as I have reflected upon that particular verse, you know how I spell commitment, Jared? Probably different than me. Probably. <laughs> how do you spell commitment? Please don't ask me that in front of these people. There's only one T in commitment. <laughs> together. There are actually two T's, but together. Uh, C-O-M-M-I. Now I can't even spell it. T M E N T. No, I know. I, I know. I know. But two T's together. So it's spelled T I M E. Do you know what that spells? Yes. And time. Time. Yes. Yes. Commitment is spelled. I learned so much from you. I, I know. I know. I'm it's, over here taking notes and everything. It's it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, aren't you so grateful yes. that I can give you yes. the blessing? Yes. Uh, just don't hug me. You know, I was always told that there is a difference between quality time and quantity time. You ever heard, heard that? It's not so much how much time you spend, but what you do in that amount of, of time or over that period. And as, as I raised a couple of sons and as I have thought about my own family as a child with my parents, I don't believe, it's not a, an either or, it's a both and. It is a lot of quality time. So it's not one or the other, it's, it's together. And then finally, I think it boils down to an issue of stewardship. Now, by definition, a steward is one to whom something or someone has been entrusted. And I... I think that's one of the lessons of Psalm 127. That's why I chose uh, to read the first four or five verses of Psalm 20, 127 when we began. Children are a heritage from, a, from the Lord, a reward uh, from Him. At least that's how the NIV reads. But I, I think the, the author there is emphasizing our children are a gift. Something that God we have received from God. And they have been entrusted uh, to us. And so this idea of uh, being a parent, being a grandparent, is one of, of stewardship. Jared? Proverbs 22, verse 6. Start children off the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Another look at it would be train a child in the way they should go. Uh, the writers here in the blessing, they, they mention kind of paraphrasing this, and it says, train up a child according to their bent. 
according to what makes them them, according to their uniqueness. Train up a child in their individualistic character. Most of you know I have three children. I've got Gavin, who's 14, and then I have my twin girls, who are 24. They came to see me on Mother's Day. Uh, they might have came to see their, their mom, too, as well. But, uh, but with my twin daughters, it's always been fun watching uh, people interact with them and trying to tell them apart. And they've used that to their advantage, I'm pretty sure, in high school. One of them went to class for the other, and the teacher didn't know until their friends told on them. Uh, but it's, it's been really interesting knowing and seeing them grow up and knowing how people at, at times who didn't know them couldn't tell them apart. But for my wife and I, and for those who got to know them, can instantly tell them apart. The, they have different personalities. They have different lights, different interests. They have different colors they even like. If, if you look at the way they decorate, they decorate differently. They're involved in different things. And our children are unique. We've talked about their high value and, and, and thinking about how they are wonderfully and fearfully made and, they, and, and how they are God's masterpiece. Well, when, when an artist creates a masterpiece, there's only one of those masterpieces. And so our children are unique. And in order for us to really have this active commitment, we have to study and understand and know our children. Side note, uh, there is a really good resource on our Right Now Media that's called Grace-Based Discipline and Grace-Based Parenting. And so as you're trying to train your children, that might be a really good resource for you to go and check out. But you still have to think about your child being unique and understanding who they are and what makes them up. John Trent, in this book, The Blessing, he recalls a story of when his 76-year-old mother passed away. Him and his two brothers go to their house, her house, and to try to kind of gather things up, and they walk into her bedroom, and they turn the corner, and there against the wall is this big bookshelf. And at this moment, they, they kind of stand in awe because of what is on this bookshelf. This 76-year-old woman at the top had books on theology and psychology. Uh, the next level of this bookshelf had books on, medical journal, on the medical journal and genetics. On the bottom one, it had magazines and books about bulldozers and tractors and heavy equipment. What they witnessed was that their mother, at 76 years old, had been collecting books and studying all the things that her children were a part of. At one point, she even enrolled in her 70s to a nearby college to learn about genetics. Even though she flunked the class, she was able to learn and have conversations with her middle child about what his interests were, what he liked, and she could understand him all the more. The theology and the psychology books, some of them were written by John Trent himself that she had, that those books were some of the most worn. But this mother studied her children. To have an active commitment, we've got to be a student of our children. So I often have parents uh, approach me and ask, okay, this is all good, and yet, what, what can it look like? What, what are some very practical things we can do that can make an impact upon our uh, children? So once again, Jared, believe it or not, I came across a list. And this goes all the way back to 2001. Columbia University established what they titled as the Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse. And beginning in 2001 and continuing for 14 or 15 years, uh, they would annually do research. And they uh, then, I think, have, have since partnered with uh, Yale University 
but I'm, I'm about to share with you what uh, they consider to be an, a hands-on parent. And I'll provide this list in our uh, Monday update uh, tomorrow, so you don't have to worry, parents, about taking these uh, notes. It'll be provided uh, for you uh, tomorrow. But a hands-on parent is involved in at least 10 of these 12 activities. A hands-off parent is only involved in five. And the families in which uh, children are being raised with hands-on uh, parents are at a considerably lower risk to be involved in substance abuse. And as the years have continued, again beginning in 2001, uh, these, these statistics have remained very steady and they are discovering that not only does it make a difference with substance abuse, but other types of addicted or, or addictive or destroying types of, of behavior. Uh, so again, very, very practical here. All right. So here are the 12 themes. Monitor what their teens watch on TV. Monitor what they do on the internet. Put restrictions on the music they listen to. Know where their teens are after school and on the weekends. Expect to be and are really told the truth by their teens where they are going in the evenings and on weekends. Number six, are very aware of their teens' academic performance. Number seven, impose a curfew. Now, I might add at this point, when my brother and I were growing up, our curfew was 11 o'clock. Along comes our sister, who is 15 years younger than I am. Her curfew was midnight. I'm like, Mom, what, what are you thinking here? You know, this is our sister. She said, well, she's more trustworthy than you two guys. <laughs> so there you go. Number eight, make it clear that you would be extremely upset if your child uses uh, pot. Number nine, eat dinner with your teen almost every night. Number 10, turn off the TV and telephones while you eat. Number 11, assign your teen regular chores and then number 12, have an adult present when the teen returns home from school. Latchkey. Wow. When, when I read that, uh, I immediately thought of our latchkey program and uh, the blessing it can be to the children who aren't able uh, to do that. And so they come here until their parents uh, can take them home. So again, those 12 activities... Uh, if your parents, if you're involved in 10 of those, you're considered to be uh, hands-on. And here is the, main, uh, the, the primary point to make with this. Almost 20% of Americans' teens live with hands-off parents. And so I would encourage uh, all of us to take this list uh, very uh, seriously and be dedicated to being hands-on parents. And again, as we extend, we extend this idea of, of the blessing, maybe, Jared, developing a list of a hands-on church. I was watching uh, my daughters, especially Shay, while Randy was uh, doing that list, and she was back there doing some checks. So. So I want to give you a kind of a, a scenario, a story, 
and, and it's going to be a preacher's story, so that means I've taken the facts and twisted them around a little bit, and we call it a parable. Um, so I'm, I'm sitting in the stands, and up behind me is this, this person who's yelling out, that's it, number three, go. You got this, number three. Come on, number five. Good rebound, 13. Good rebound. Hustle up, 23. And the whole time, this person is, is animated throughout the game. But the whole time, never once says any of their names, just calls out their numbers. And in my mind, I thought, they really don't know this team, but they're being encouraging. And then my mind started to wonder and think about it. Well, I wonder if it matters to them if they really win or lose. In fact, I wonder if number 13 has a good game or not. If the person in the stands up at the top is, is going to be excited for them or is going to be saddened that they didn't have a good game. And in my mind... I kind of made this person out to be just a person in the stands, disconnected from the players. But they're in the stands, said a mother. A mother who hollered out not just her kids' names, but other kids on the team's names. A mother who was, who was encouraging them when a shot was missed. And the difference in my mind was, to this mother, it really does matter. Not ultimately whether the team wins the game, but ultimately whether these kids do really well and do their best. And, and specifically her son. It matters if her son does the best he can and is the best version of himself and only himself out there. And as he's going down this, this court and he's about to do a layup, you can, you can hear the mother hold her breath as he meets his two opponents who outweigh him by 50 pounds each, wondering, is he physically going to be okay? And then after the game, that mother's going to visit with the kid in the car. It's going to talk about the game. It's going to talk about what he did good, what he could approve on, and it's just going to give him encouragement. And later that week, that mother's going to drive him to practice and pick him back up from practice. She's going to go to work and spend her energy and her time to make sure that that kid, that boy, has shoes on his feet. There's a difference in these two people sitting in the stands, a dramatic difference. One is being a spectator who can sit up top and kind of talk about whether the team should be doing this or doing that. If the coach is off or, or, or is the coach got a good plan or not, can sit there and spectate from the stands and critique, but at the end of the day gets to go home and doesn't think about it again. But for the mother, she's got skin in the game. And as I think about this scenario, I'm no longer thinking about families. I'm thinking about church. So ask yourself, who are you in the stands? Are you the one that's hollering out numbers of players? Are you up in the stands critiquing what should be done and what shouldn't be done? Are you like the mother who has skin in the game? Because of the difference between the two is the one who has skin in the game hurts when the, the others hurt. Win when the others win. Lose when the others lose. I tell my teenagers that I work with that you need to listen to the people's opinions who have mo more skin in the game, who have the most to lose when you lose, the most to succeed when you succeed. What about us? We're called to, to carry one another's burdens, Galatians. To bear one another's burdens. That's a different picture of just standing in the stands and hollering out and critiquing. It's a picture that we've got to know each other's names. We've got to know how each other work and operate, how we're bent. 
I think that's one of the great things that Randy is trying to do with this unity on Wednesday night. I get to hear glimpses of it. And, and he's got this, this phrase that he, I believe, introduced last Wednesday night that we need to meet, greet, and eat. Because when we meet and we greet, we get to know each other's names. And when we eat, we get to know how we're bent. What makes us us? Because we're all unique. So may you find a place here that you feel connected, that you feel loved, but may you create a place that you are willing to tell people, I know your name, I know your struggles, and I'll help you carry that burden. Wow, what a, what a morning. Uh, this reminds me, the price is right. You know, they had that old boy up over the mic. He said, come on down. They gave me a mic and said, go on down. So <laughs> said, there's not no mic up there. It's a wonderful morning to be here to worship our good Lord, our God, and our Savior, and remember our Savior Jesus and what both of them has done for us to take care of us and love us and save us from our sin. It did my heart good this morning to uh, have these Kids for Christ kids up here. Greg and Kristen up here. Well, they take that serious, that uh, KFC Kids for Christ, because if you remember, Jesus loves the little children. Uh, it'd probably be counterproductive for me to sing that to you, so I'll just remind you of that. But uh, that's what they're doing, seeing that these little children, as their mama carries them through pregnancy, are healthy when they get here, and that they have a healthy mother after they're born to take care of them. And I believe that mother will remember it was godly people that shared with her. And uh, it's good that we have folks over there, like David and Laurie with the Live Beyond ministry that's doing these things, and we're trying to help partner with them and help, help with that. So uh, y'all try to dig down this morning at the end of this after I pray this morning. There'll be some children and kids around that's got, I believe, black cups is what they told me. So don't give it to anybody who's got a red cup, whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, anyway, they'll have cups for you to give out of your abundance to help these people that need and have no way to provide for their need except for somebody like you that for, for your, from your abundance. A uh, little bit about our... Mothers, it's a great blessing to have wise, strong, godly women among us. Many of them are mothers, and many of them try to, they are mothers to other children that's not even theirs, but they take care of them, teach them about, about God, teach them by example, about things. It's a wonderful thing. I'm going to read uh, just a little bit here what the Bible says over here in Proverbs. He's talking about women in general in this Proverbs chapter 31, but I'm just going to read when it gets down there about the mothers, 26 through 31. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Well, let's just remember our mothers and be proud of our wise and strong and godly women we have among us. Uh, we need to remember Wayne, our brother Wayne Kirby, Successful surgery he had last night. We did not like last night, but last week we need to thank the Lord for that because it was a pretty serious thing, and the su surgery came out pretty successful. They're still monitoring him and waiting for some things to stabilize, like the heart rhythm and rate. And we hope he'll be home in a few days, but continue to pray for him. And uh, remember Brian Hardy and his family and his mother passing away, and we have also 
Johnny Hauser. Uh, I think I had about the same thing wrote down. Uh, Daryl gave me this morning. Uh, his funeral is going to be Wednesday, this, this Wednesday, May the 12th. I believe it's at 2 o'clock at the uh, Roden Prior Funeral Home in their chapel. And then also later after that funeral, right after the funeral, they're going to be at M Mount Olivet Cemetery in Hugo, and there's going to be a U.S. Navy National Guard flag ceremony following that. So that'd be a, a good thing to go to. I don't know any, how many of you have ever been to Mount Olivet Cemetery. And cemeteries sometimes can be pretty and sometimes not to me, but that's one of the most beautiful cemeteries I've ever been in over there. It's, so I'd give you another reason to go over, but you go over for Johnny and his family. Uh, this morning, after I pray, our shepherd's prayer, that'll be our closing prayer. Uh, we'll have folks, anybody that needs to pray with someone, talk to someone about something going on in your life, we're going to have folks up here, we call them a prayer team or prayer warriors, whatever you want to call them, they'll be one of your brothers or sisters that you trust and want to talk to. They'll be up here in the corners across here and across the front. So we invite you to come up here after I pray and all this will be, unless you tell us different, I've told you this before and I think it's been kind of you know, it's private. It's between you and whoever you're talking to and praying with you. If you want it to be public, you can have them talk to one of the elders, and the elders can pray for you in public. But a lot of times you just need someone to talk to or someone to, to pray with you. So if you will, you go with me in prayer now. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all our mothers, Father. We thank you for strong, godly women that are among us, the ones that serve you and love you. Father, we pray that we can all be like that. We thank you so much for Jesus, for your love, that you would love us so much, you would give your son that you love so much to save us, even when we were evil. You wanted to save us from our sins so we could be with you again someday. And we thank you so much for that, and we always want to remember that in Jesus. Father, help us let the Holy Spirit work in our lives and guide us, guide us in ways sometimes that we don't see the way to go. I pray this morning, as I, even as I pray, that the Holy Spirit is there interpreting and interceding for the, what I say. Father, we pray that you be with our brother Wayne Kirby, that he will keep getting stronger, heal well, and all these arrhythmias, whatever, will stabilize, and he will be himself again and be able to do whatever he wants to, Father. Cause, and we believe all this will be through you because we've been praying to you all along. And we know that you're blessing him and, and others. Father. We pray that you be with others in our congregation that are sick. I'm not going to try to aim, name them all. We, we have a list of them here in the bulletin and all. But, uh, Father, we pray that you be with all of them and, and strengthen them and, and comfort them and, and heal them. Father, we pray with, be with those that have lost loved ones. We be with Brian Hardy's family. That you would also be with the Johnny Hauser family. Father, we're going to miss those folks. And we pray that you take care of them and we pray that we can be of a help to them. Father, we pray that you would go with us and guide us, that you'd help us always extend mercy to others as you extend mercy to us, because we know you desire mercy. You want us to do that. And you want us, if, we, if you forgive us, you expect us to forgive others and help us never fail at that. Help us always be ready to forgive others. Go with us and guide us now and help us be good stewards and try to be like Jesus. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you, the Lord turn his face.